I am quite young, but I'm old enough to remember certain things. Like, I remember the golden age of MasterChef. <laughs> Some of you might remember this. Lloyd Grossman. <laughs> Free kitchens. No messing about. It was amazing. Nowadays, MasterChef is the most needlessly dramatic programme <laughs> in the entire world. The start of MasterChef is this. This is as tough as cooking gets. <laughs> No, it's not. Clearly, you've never got home at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> pissed out your mind and thought, I am making a quiche, right? <laughs> 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 Although, uh, Drunken Master Chef would be an amazing programme. <laughs> Imagine the commentary. Kimberly decided to skip dessert and instead has put a traffic cone on the fridge. <laughs> there you go. Over to the blue kitchen, just a guy like, I was, I was preparing it. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that, Diego. I was preparing the salad for the stir fry, and then instead, I just done a poo in the wok. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we do that. We've asked them each to bring in the most powerful smell. Mmm, yes, smell. Widely renowned for working well on television. <laughs> so it's a powerful smell that you've brought in. Uh, it's something, if you've used your brains, will appeal to me. Ian Sterling, welcome to the show. What smell have you brought in? Uh, well, I didn't realise you had to enjoy it. I just had to be powerful. That's yeah, yeah, so I farted in a jar. <laughs> it's true. There it is. <laughs> What have you been eating? There's a Greg's on the end of my street and a McDonald's not far from it. Yeah. And the other day, I was hungover and got a Greg's sausage roll on the way to the McDonald's. Wow. I've taken a sample from the fart in the jar. So you have the choice to smell the powerful smell if you want. Well, I think we all know this is going to end, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> How did you get it from the big uh, jar into the... Funnels! <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, horrified by the fart in the jar, but Alex's face redeemed it, so I think you're in the running. Congratulations. Wow. Hello, Joe. Hi, Al. How are you? Alex. I'm good, thank you. Alex. <laughs> Build the best volcano. You have 10 minutes to design your volcano blueprint. You then have 20 minutes to build and demonstrate your volcano. Your time starts now. Um, what have we got to build with? We need cork, yeah? It's like bicarbonate of soda and something. Or oh, then what's the kind of, the one that, like Mentos and cola, was that, is that a thing? Mentos, yeah? That'll go up like a like Christmas. Come on! As many as you can physically get in there. We can do a few more than that, I reckon. Put them on. Josh is there. Rob's right at the top. Bob's down there. No purse there. And Catherine's here. They're all, they're all, they're all conquerors. Okay. This is dedicated to all the champions of champions. I hope to join you all one day on this magnificent volcano. Go in. Up. Ten minutes up, Ian. We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> it's increasingly, I find. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm so, I'm so genuinely heartbroken by it. I can't even uh, begin to ridicule you. I think it's, um, it's a crying shame. The, the engineering, oh. the vision, and then that. <laughs> And then the cry of, I'll see you in the champion of champions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. it, it's just, it's, it's a Shakespearean tragedy. <laughs> How'd you feel? I, ge <laughs> I genuinely don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> Oh, hello, Lou. Please stand this side of the rope. So... Fuck it. <laughs> I'm... Oh. Travel the furthest distance while making a constant noise with your mouth. You must start travelling in 30 seconds from now. So it's going to be a constant noise? Yeah, I'm going to re release you. Oh, OK. In 25 seconds I'm now. a bit out of breath, you see. Any sort of noise with your mouth? Uh, just briefly, why were you out of breath before you did the task? <laughs> the walk <laughs> across the field. I just walked across the field. <laughs> and I genuinely started reading the task going, well, how have I got out of breath? I need to reassess everything. Oh, li listen, I mean, it's almost certainly an underlying heart problem. <laughs> um, good. <laughs> Here are Paul Sinar and Ian Sterling, together forever. Off you go. Uh... Where did, sorry, I, I got tired as well. Where did he stop? Here. <sighs> On my trousers. Got it on your leg. Yeah. <laughs> you took a breath right at the... Uh, did I? The flag, yeah. Why did you do that? Ran out, I ran out of breath. Ran out of breath, so you needed to breathe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A very poor vital capacity. You're not... Yes. No, I saw that. Oh, well, thank you. Bye. But I'm going to have to rewind that. <laughs> Uh, very poor vital capacity. Yeah. But how lovely to see one of the deleted scenes from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> <laughs> Played out for eight seconds. <laughs> um, Ian, you know, pretty funky attempt, but that was not a continuous sound. It yeah. But the, nope, it, it wasn't. It, the beat in between, if there was the beat. Oh, the silence between those beats. There wasn't any. If it was a beat, it sounded to me like you were saying butter gather over <laughs> I was saying boots and cats. Boots and cats. That's how you do beatboxing. Is it? Boots and cats. 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 Oh, sorry, that just pulled me on the, um... Are you all right? You're right. Yeah, no, it's fine. Welcome. I do apologise, Alex. I don't trust a thing you say, okay. Alex. No? I don't know what's going on now. No. I'm getting nervous, no. and there's, like, blood on that. Oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, 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 you clever man. Oh. Make the most realistic injury using food. You have five minutes to choose your ingredients then ten minutes to make your realistic injury. If two or more people use tomato ketchup, they're disqualified. I won't go that basic. It's a challenging double bluff, isn't it? <laughs> your time starts now. Now, Ian Sterling. <laughs> Why? Why have you done this to me? Oh, 
I mean, horrific. <laughs> but I honestly think if I was called in to look at that injury, I would go, oh, my God. It looks baked beans. Because <laughs> he sawed my leg off of a baked bean tin. Ah. Oh, oh, there is some logic. Hmm? Oh, there's always logic. Sometimes it's more hidden than others. <laughs> How are you? Good, how are you? Yeah. Yes. Little Horns 2019 catalogue. It's me. Sexy. Mmm, dream boy. Choose an outfit that the contestant whose first name comes after yours alphabetically must wear throughout a future task. L M. We're looking for an M. <laughs> it doesn't have to be directly after yours in the alphabet. Oh, any, so any, so Paul L M N O P, Paul Sinner, for example. Um, Lou, no. Joe, no. The other Ian, one? no. No, well, it is Ian, because there's no one after you. Oh, you could have just said that. I, I could have. You have two minutes to make your choice. Your time starts now. J. -J. Yeah, there's a contestant called Joe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh! Can you eat them? Mm -hmm. Can you say purple? As a flavour? Yeah, is that... I mean, just because of the colour, like, maybe beetroot, it's not that, but it's something... <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know what that is. Minty! I'd honestly say that tastes like toothpaste. I mean, I don't... <laughs> that tastes like charcoal. Burnt. 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 OK, so I've got purple, mint and burnt. <laughs> <laughs> that tastes like burnt toast. Bread! Burnt bread. <laughs> Can you not with it? <laughs> oh, wow. Would you like a glass of water? Yeah. yeah. That's bad. <laughs> Cocoa powder. Like the husk, like the bit of a peanut that you throw away. Oh! Just vinegar. That's sort of fishy, though. <laughs> That's sweet, but in a in a in a really weird way. Like um, I don't know, almost kind of almost a honey, but fishy vinegar. <laughs> Getting old shit, innit? We're all in the shit bit. <laughs> Everyone in this room, age-wise, is in the shit bit. The shit bit starts when you're about 10, and then it sort of carries on until you're nearly dead. <laughs> shit, innit? It's so shit. <laughs> I used to have fun. You get old, and I go to dinner parties, and my friend tells me how long my dinner's been in a slow cooker. That's all that happens. <laughs> That's all nights out are now. Do you see that lamb? 12 hours, it's been in there. It's falls <laughs> off the bone. Have you tried the lamb? We've cooked it for 12 hours. <laughs> so that's what happens when you get old, isn't it? You buy a house outside the city centre, you buy a slow cooker, and then you die. That's what happens. <laughs> I used to go clubbing. It was amazing. I loved people watching in the nightclubs, man. That was my favourite thing to do, just watch people. Women, mainly. Not for naughty reasons, just women are better. <laughs> women are better. It's incredible. The numbers involved. How do you know so many people? Women. <laughs> my girlfriend goes to the cinema on a Wednesday. We're going to the cinema now. It's just the 60 of us. How have you got so many friends? <laughs> As a man, you get to about 25 and realise that you've hate everyone you've ever met. That's what happens. 
I have no more friends. I play five-a-side football every Thursday, and Craig's got to bring his cousin Donald, who's a prick, but fuck it, he's got a ball. So... <laughs> you think women are the nice ones. I used to think that until I got older, and I, and I now don't chase ladies. I just speak to them as friends, and they are honest with me, man. And you people are liquid evil. <laughs> Lads, listen to this. Women will have a WhatsApp group with all their friends in it. They then have another WhatsApp group with all their friends, less one of the friends. <laughs> Look at them laughing. <laughs> so they can discuss the fucked up shit that bitch said in that WhatsApp group. <laughs> it's brutal. <laughs> clapping. We do that. Her name's Karen. We fucking hate her. I look at you. How nasty. Oh my God, Rona, what colour dress are you wearing tonight? Um, I'm thinking blue. Fucking blue. Told you. Every time. <laughs> nah, it's just, it's, uh, I just want to be young again. It's good. Young people are more fun. You know, I was on a train once. I can't remember where it's going. It's not important. What is important? I had a table of four to myself. Thank you. Working class victory. I know. <laughs> now, the problem with table four to yourself, we'll all know this, is that the train journey is now ruined. You can no longer enjoy the train journey because every time the train pulls into the station, <laughs> you can see them. They're outside. The enemy. And you know what they want? They want your fucking table before you're not getting it. <laughs> this woman gets on the train and she sits directly opposite me, at a table for four, directly opposite. Move left, leg room, come on. <laughs> the reason she's in front of me, she's got an eight-year-old. Now, the eight-year-old recognises me because I'm also a children's television presenter with no time to get into how the fuck that happened, but I did. <laughs> Thank you, one lady. So, the eight-year-old recognises me, we get chatting. Eventually, I say to the eight-year-old, standard question, I go, all right, mate, where are you from? What that kid did next is the greatest thing that has ever happened to me in my entire life. He pointed down there <laughs> at his own mother's vagina. Because <laughs> that's where he comes from. The kid's a genius. He should join the UN because he's just eliminated racism. <laughs> Every conversation from now on in. Where do you come from? A vagina. Fuck me too. Let's be friends. <laughs> Very quickly before I go, I don't want to sound too negative. There is a good bit towards the end of life. When you're old, it gets good. You'll have parents or grandparents. I just can't wait to be so old that I can go out with my family in public, say something horrific, <laughs> then turn to my family and go, that's now your problem. <laughs> <laughs> go to the restaurant, something racist. All right, son, you deal with that. <laughs> I just finished my Rogan Josh. <laughs> my gran was the best friend. God rest her soul. I've got, she's a great woman, mad. My whole family's a bit mad. Might explain me better. Give you an example. My parents, also mad. I had a Saturday off, so I went to surprise my parents, right? So I drive in the driveway. They don't know I'm coming. I walk into the living room. Saturday night, my parents are watching television, as they do. On this occasion, however, my parents are not sat on sofa. My mum and dad are sat in office chairs <laughs> facing away from the television. I walked in and went, Mum, what are you doing? And my mum said, We're watching The Voice. I'm playing along at home. <laughs> my mum had fallen out with my dad because he hadn't turned round once. Just a miserable old man in a chair facing a wall. Shite, he's shite. They are shite. <laughs> So anyway, I went on holiday a few years ago now with my family. Main holiday, we're in Antigua, right? We get to Antigua and um, mum, dad, me and my gran, and it's chucking it down with rain. Raining, three days, solid rain, 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 rain. My mum's fuming, right? She's obsessed with back home now, just always on Facebook. Look at that, that's Janice in Edinburgh, 25 degree garden, she's got a tan. I'm in Antigua with fucking gout. What is happening? <laughs> After three days, we need to get out of the hotel, we're going insane, so. Mum, dad, me and my gran, we pile into the car. Mum and dad in the front. 
I'm in the back of my grind, and we're driving through the rain. The rain's coming down. We're driving through. We get stopped at this red light, right? As we stop at this red light, right, this massive Antiguan bloke just walks alongside the car, okay? Gets his willy out, just starts having a wee in the street. Right? <laughs> My mum's doing that amazing, middle-class, British thing of pretending that that isn't happening. <laughs> it's five feet from her head, but all of a sudden, everything in the car becomes incredibly fascinating. <laughs> so, oh, um, everyone, look at this button on the dashboard here. The CD goes in, it comes back in. Everyone's ignoring this, apart from my gran, who in the back of the car just goes, Look how black that is! Right. <laughs> now, obviously, you can't say that. That's an offensive thing to say. Everyone is offended, apart from me. Because I'm not looking at the guy, I'm looking at my gran. My gran wasn't looking at the guy either. My gran was looking up there at a massive rain cloud. <laughs> God's honest truth. I was like, I cannot let this slide. I was like, here, Gran, do you want to stand underneath it and I'll get a photo, right? <laughs> she will pass me my umbrella. My mum shits herself. She's like, no! <laughs> my mum's shooting through red lights, the rain's coming down, no one knows about the cloud situation. That's when my Gran goes, I've not seen one that big since your granddad passed away. <laughs>